is Mr. Coates, and this is Apes Lecture number 23 on humans and energy use. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about a little bit about where uh, our energy is coming from, both in the United States and in the world, and what we use that energy for, as well as different forms of the energy that we produce. Remember, energy is the ability to perform work. So uh, we get energy from lots of sources, obviously uh, non-renewable in the form of fossil fuels. And then we can get it also from renewable in the form of like solar. This is a solar farm here, also called a solar power tower, if you will, because all of these mirrors direct the solar rays right up to the top of this tower right up here, where they're concentrated and create uh, a very hot area. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then also the ways we use our energy here. Obviously in the United States, most of our energy used is in transportation. So in cars and buses and planes and getting around in the United States is where most of our energy consumption comes from. So when we talk about energy sources, we're talking talk about primary energy versus secondary energy sources. So primary energy sources are things we directly get energy from. So we're talking about the fossil fuels here, hydroelectric from the falling of water when we make uh, dams, geothermal when we get power directly from the earth, uh, solar energy directly from the sun. So these are primary energy sources. Now when we take those energy resources and we create some other type of energy with them, we get secondary energy resources. Electricity is a, is a secondary type of energy source and so we get that from using a primary energy source. Source. So when you plug in your iPod down here in the outlet, you're using electricity, which actually came from the burning of coal or natural gas or something like that. Now, when we talk about energy, we have to look at how does the world stack up to the United States in energy use? Not very good, actually. The port statistic here is that the United States has 4.6% of the world's population. Uh, so we don't have a huge population compared to the rest of the world. However, we take almost a quarter of the world's energy here. Um, and so that's a huge amount, and that's all due to our affluence. If you remember going back to the very beginning of this class, we did the ecological footprint, and we found out that uh, Americans are very affluent. We have a lot of resources, and uh, therefore we have a fairly large footprint. And one of our resources here is this energy use. Now, our energy mostly comes from non-renewable sources here in the United States, 93% from fossil fuels, so oil, coal, natural gas. And this is a huge concern because that fuel source is eventually going to run out. This is what non-renewable means. And so uh, in the future, and I don't know how long it's going to take, but in the future, we're going to have to find a replacement for 93% of our energy use here in the United States. Uh, and that's kind of scary if you think about it. Now, a small percentage comes from nuclear power, and we're going to get into the specifics of nuclear power and what the problems are associated with it um, in a little bit, but 8% um, of our energy here in the United States comes from nuclear power. And then the remaining 7% comes from uh, renewable resources, hydropower, geothermal, solar, and biomass. Keep in mind this 8% is within this 93%. Nuclear power is also non-renewable, and we'll talk about why that is a little bit later. But if we look at our graphs over here, and let me change the color of the pen. Uh, if we look at our graphs over here, we have the world here, we have the United States over here. And if you look at oil here, oil's a huge one. Um, in the United States, 39% of our energy comes from oil. Uh, in the world, it's 33. Also, we have a little bit larger coal uh, use here and also a little bit larger natural gas. Where we're lacking is over here in the biomass area. And biomass means the burning of uh, or using biomass to create energy, either in the production of alcohol or in uh, the actual just burning of it to produce heat. And so um, the rest of the world has to use biomass. So they're actually burning plants uh, and uh, creating or creating alcohol from plants uh, on the most part. And we'll see about that in a minute but we don't use biomass a whole lot here in the United States. Other sources, hydropower, geothermal, and nuclear are all included in here. Now how has energy use in the United States changed? Where do we get our energy sources? Well obviously in the beginning wood was our main source. We had lots of forest in this area. When the pioneers were coming through we didn't know about coal, we didn't know about oil. Obviously nu nuclear was not even on the horizon. And so most of our energy came from wood. Now as the Industrial Revolution occurred, we found the discovery of coal. Coal became a primary energy source here in the United States. 
and then that dropped off once we discovered oil. Um, oil has also slowly started decreasing with other types of uh, energy such as natural gas. Natural gas has come to the forefront in the United States as being one of our biggest providers or will be in the future because of our large stores of natural gas. One of the things to note down here is nuclear. Nuclear had a nice spike here in the 1970s, 1960s. However, it is predicted to level off and we'll talk about why that is. And then we have this big question mark here. This is what the revolution in energy could be, called the hydrogen solar rev revolution. And we'll talk about this a little bit when we get into renewable, but uh, this is basically using solar energy to create hydrogen gas, and then using that hydrogen gas as our fuel source. Remember, hydrogen gas is uh, flammable, and we can burn that in engines um, and other places to create power. And so if we can harness solar energy and make it more efficient to create hydrogen, then um, uh, this will take a place uh, of a lot of these non-renewable fuels. And uh, so this is actually the future of uh, power in the United States. The trick is to make the solar more efficient and more affordable. All right, so when we talk about different energy types, they are more efficient for certain cases. And so we want to look at these. These are net energy ratios. So we talked about net energy in the last lecture. It's the amount of useful energy we get from the total amount of energy available. And so if we're talking about space heating, we're talking about heating a room in your house. Okay, that's what we're talking about, space heating. Uh, passive solar is one of the best ways to do that. And we'll talk about what passive solar is a little bit later when we get into renewable energy. Uh, after that, natural gas is best, and then oil. And then once we get down here, this is basically how most of our heating and cooling happens in the United States is down here. It's not a very big net energy ratio. It's not the best way to heat our houses. So if we get down here to high industrial heat, so this is industrial heat needed for uh, manufacturing processes, then coal becomes a much better source for that energy. Obviously, passive solar, there's no way that's going to be able to produce enough heat to uh, run industry. So coal is the best source there. And then transportation. Right now, uh, the best one that would give us the biggest bang for our buck would be ethanol from sugarcane. However, in the United States, we don't do that a whole lot. Actually, Brazil is becoming the leader in ethanol from sugarcane. Um, if we go down here, then we go from gasoline, which is refined crude oil. And we'll talk about what that means a little bit later. But uh, that is less efficient than actually getting ethanol from sugarcane residue. And then ethanol from corn, which is where most of the ethanol in our gasoline here in the United States comes from, is actually the worst. And so uh, we aren't using the most efficient ways to power things, especially our transportation here in the United States. And that's unfortunate. Now, when we talk about energy in developing nations, we have to look at what are they using most of their energy for and where is it coming from? So if we look at these uh, dark red areas, these are our developing nations that uh, use a bunch of solid fuels. And by solid fuels, we mean wood mostly here. So this is called fuel wood, and they're using wood for cooking. So if we look at a lot of these developing nations, they are still in the dark ages, really, when it comes to energy use. Most of their energy comes from wood. They use most of that wood for cooking. If you look at all the developed nations here, we hardly use any solid type of fuel for cooking anymore. We all use electric or gas at this point. And uh, so this is a major transition that these developed nations uh, need to kind of uh, go towards in order to become more of a uh, developed nation. The problem is, is that a lot of us in these developing nations here, we're using those non-renewables. And so we need to get to more of the, of the renewable fuels. Now, one of the moves that is happening in a lot of these developed nations is solar cooking. Uh, solar cooking uh, is basically coming about in a lot of these African nations, especially where there's lots of sunlight and uh, there are lots of grassroots organizations out there that are supplying these people who are cutting down forest for, for uh, cooking and supplying them with solar ovens instead. And a solar oven, if it's the right design, can be very efficient at cooking meals. So a lot of organizations are actually supplying these villages with solar ovens rather than uh, trying to educate them not to cut down their forest and uh, giving them an alternative. So later on uh, in the year, we'll look at solar cooking and see what that's all about. Well, I hope that was helpful in uh, getting you to understand how uh, energy is uh, distributed around the planet and the different types of energy out there and where we use our energy most efficiently.